Hello and welcome everybody. This is the first video for section 3. And in this section we prepare for our statistical analysis of multiple linear regression by studying random vectors a bit. And we'll talk about what is a random vector and what is the expectation of a random vector and what is the covariance of a random vector. And then in the last part, we will also discuss the multivariate normal distribution, which will play a big role in our analysis. Good, and I'll split this into three videos, three parts, one for each topic. And we'll start straight away with expectations. So let us see what we need here. So our model is y equals x beta plus epsilon. And for a statistical model, what we need is we need random errors. So epsilon is the vector epsilon 1 up to epsilon n. And the epsilon i we assume here are normal distributed with mean 0 and variance sigma squared. And we also assume the epsilon i independent. So epsilon i, 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 d. And i, i, d is short for independent and identically distributed. Good. So epsilon is a vector of random components and x beta we assume to be fixed. x is the design matrix which tells us where are our data points, which inputs do we use for our data points. And beta is the coefficient vector which is unknown but also fixed. So that's a fixed vector but here is a random vector and that makes y also a random vector. So y is in the model capital Y1 up to capital Yn. And later when we do analysis, we need to match this up with the data vector little y1 to little yn. Good. So these are two random vectors which appear in our model. And the reason why we are discussing random vectors here is just that we need random vectors in our model. Good. So first thing, if we let z be a random vector, then the question is what is the expectation of a random vector. And that is rather straightforward, namely we know the expectation of a random variable, of a random number, and we use it here, z1 for example is a random number, and we just take the expectation of z1 to be the first component of the expectation of z, and then we do expectation of z2, and so on up to expectation of zn. So the expectation of a random vector is just the vector of the expectations. In short, I can write that as e of z i's component equals expectation of z i. That is more compact, but of course now it is also more subtle because now the whole thing is this i is once outside and once inside, which is what this thing here does. But I here prefer the vector notation on the left because it's a bit more explicit. So on the right we need to write for all i from 1 up to n. Good, and that is really all there is to it. We just need to think a bit what are properties of this special kind of expectation. And this basically inherits all properties from the standard expectations. For example, if y and z are random vectors, then the expectation of y plus z equals expectation y plus expectation z. Let me write the proof in blue. This expectation is defined component-wise, using that rule, or maybe the compact rule here. So we can write expectation y plus z i's component is, by the rule from the previous page, expectation of the random vector y plus z and then the i's component of this vector. So I move the i inside. Then we know vectors are added by adding the components y i plus z i. And then we know the expectation of numbers. That's what we have here is linear. So we know we can split that into two. And then we undo the whole thing. So we can, with the rule from the previous page, say that is component i of the expectation of y plus component i of the expectation of z. And that holds for all i. And if two vectors, namely expectation y plus z and the sum here, if they agree in all components, then the vectors are equal, so expectation y plus z equals expectation y plus expectation z. And you see, really not much interesting happened in this proof. It was just at 
this location here I use that we know the sum can be taken out of one dimension expectations and then we just fit it with indices. So let me just write a few more rules. For example, if a is a number, then expectation a times z is a times expectation of z. And the proof here is very similar to what we just did, only a bit easier. Good. So that is that. And there is one slightly more interesting rule. I want to look at that in a bit more detail, namely vectors we can multiply with matrices. So if capital A is in R M times N and Z in R N random, then I'm going to show you the expectation of A Z is A times the expectation of Z. And that with the m here, it's now an equation in Rm. So let me just write the dimensions here. Well, a is m times n, and z is n times 1, if you want it like that. So that is m times 1, and here a is m times n, and the expectation doesn't do anything, so that must be equal, and z is n times 1. So whatever that whole thing is in Rm times 1, which is the same as Rm. Good. So let's do one more proof here, namely the proof of that equality. So same idea, expectation of a vector is defined component-wise, so we can only look at the i's component. We know that is a, z, i, and the expectation of this. Then in here we can expand the matrix vector product, so that is expectation sum a, i, j, z, j. j goes from 1 to n. And now, same as before, we know we can take sums and constant factors out of the expectation. So that is sum j from 1 to n, a i j expectation of z j. And then I can take the j out of the expectation, j from 1 to n, a i j expectation of the vector z j's component of this. And that is now a matrix vector multiplication of matrix A with the expectation of Z. So that's A expectation of Z and of that thing, the I's component. Good. These are the rules. So let us just try these out. In our model, we have Y is X beta plus epsilon. And first, expectation of epsilon i's component is the expectation of epsilon i which by assumption was zero and from that we conclude expectation of epsilon is the zero vector zero 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 so that's n zeros similarly for y so we can use at least some of the rules expectation of y is expectation of x beta plus epsilon and now I use a rule which I haven't explicitly written, but constant vectors can be taken out. X beta is not random. We have X beta plus expectation of epsilon. And this rule, which I haven't proved really, goes just like this, only that where I wrote Y here, it's not random. So we have a constant here. So if we take it apart, well, we use the rule additive constants can be taken out of expectations and it goes through like this. Or you can actually use this rule by just saying y is the random variable which always takes the value a or x beta. So that works out and expectation of epsilon is zero, so that's x beta. So of our two random vectors, we can take the expectations with the rules we have. Okay, so that was quite straightforward, I would say. And we will go straight ahead and discuss covariance matrices in the next video. So see you there.